right, everybody. Today we're going to be painting a classic Ral Partha Gargoyle, otherwise known as a Man of War from Battletech, in the Ghost Bear Alpha Galaxy color scheme. And for that, you're going to need the following Citadel paints. You'll need Black Templar Contrast, Null Oil Shade, Kalidor Sky Base, Lothurn Blue Layer, Lead Belcher Base, and Corex White Base as well as Eandin Yellow Contrast, Lemon Yellow from Vallejo, and Technical Ard Coat from Citadel to finish it off. Our base coat is going to be Gray Seer from Citadel, which is in the rattle can here, and we'll finish it off with a pass of Tester's Dull Coat. And for this, I'll be using the following brushes. I have here an Army Painter Regiment brush for base coating. Any base coating brush will do from Walmart, a craft store, your local game store. Then I have the equivalent of a size 1 brush here. It's my Citadel small base brush. Any size 1 will do just fine. Then I have here my dry brush that I use to dry brush the entire miniature when I'm not doing tight control dry brushing. Obviously it's well worn, well loved, but any real dry brush that you can get from any hobby store or any kind of game store, it'll work just fine. I have here <laughs> a beat to death small dry brush <laughs> that I like to use for stippling, which is what you'll want, so you'll want for it to be kind of short like that. Doesn't matter if it's frayed a little bit, you're not going to have to be precise with it. And then here I have the equivalent of about a size zero or so. This is my Citadel Extra Small Artificer Lair. Those are the brushes we're going to need. Alright, I've got my miniature all sprayed down with Grey Seer Undercoat Spray, so now I'm going to grab my Black Templar Contrast Paint and load up my Regiment Base Coat Brush. I'm really going to go to town on this miniature at the outset here. I don't want you to worry too hard about getting too much paint in any one particular area, because if the paint pools up in that area and you don't like it, you can always use the bristles of the brush to wick away that contrast paint and spread it out over different parts of the miniature. Now you're going to notice on the head here I give it a little bit of an extra push. That's because I don't want to see too much of that gray sear undercoat as I go over the miniature. What I'm going for right now at this stage is total miniature coverage. Now don't worry if you miss a tiny spot here or there. We can make up for that later. But right now all you want to do is just try your best to make sure you get as much coverage as is humanly possible. And remember, this isn't a precision maneuver. You don't need to have the hands of a surgeon here, and you don't need to rush your way through it. Slow and steady will absolutely win the race for you here. All you have to do is just take your time and make sure you get as much coverage on the first go as is humanly possible. At the end, if you notice that any areas have pooled up, this is the time you take your brush and start to wick it away. The underarms and the inner legs are some of the spots that I always tend to miss on this first go around, so if you're anything like me, that's a spot that I would definitely check out before you end up putting the miniature down to let it dry. Once it's done, I would give it at least an hour to dry before you move on to the next step. And this is how it should look after the first pass of Black Templar Contrast. Now as it spins around here in the back, you can see there's a little bit of that pooling going on there toward the back of the legs and some of the arms. That's not the hugest deal in the world. If this happens to you, don't worry about it. We're going to move on to the next step, and in that step we're going to use a Nuln Oil Shade, and that's hopefully going to smooth all of that out for us. Alright, I've got my Nuln Oil out now, and this is just second verse, same as the first. Taking my time and going for total miniature coverage here. What you're going to notice as you spread the Nuln Oil out over the miniature is that it's going to smooth out that Black Templar contrast and hopefully make those areas where the contrast paint pooled up that isn't to your liking less noticeable to the naked eye. Again, just taking my time, wicking away any pools that I don't want to have on the miniature with the bristles of the brush, and just making sure that I don't miss any of the spots that I traditionally miss like the underarms or the inner legs as I go over the miniature here. As I said before, this is one of those things where you'll want to give it just about an hour or so to dry after you're finished with it before you move on to the next step. And once you've hit that point, give it one final once over and hit any spots that you may have missed on the first go around and then set it down to dry. And as we come back, we see that the desired effect has been achieved here with the Nuln Oil, which is the smoothing out of that Black Templar contrast paint. Some of those areas that originally looked kind of pooled up no longer look the same, and I'm absolutely happy with this result, and I feel like we can move on to the next step. Alright, so now I have out my Dawnstone paint and my dry brush here, 
and you'll notice that I'm not going to put a whole heck of a lot of paint on the tip of this brush because ultimately I'm not going to end up needing most of it. I have here a napkin that I use specifically for this purpose, so I'm going to wipe off the vast majority of the paint from the brush so that only just a tiny amount of paint is coming off of it as I move it across the miniature. The idea here is to highlight the edges and the raised areas of the miniature to give it just a little more depth after you washed over it with Nuln Oil to make it pop just that little bit more. You'll notice as I move the brush across the miniature here that I'm not exactly going for precision. Again, this isn't anything you need a surgeon's hand for. You don't have to be super accurate with it. You can just go until you feel like you've done enough. And once you feel like you've done enough, go ahead and stop there. A little bit goes a long way in this process. And as you can see here, the Dawnstone has neatly highlighted the edges and the raised areas of the miniature, giving it a much more pronounced optical illusion of depth and shade than what we had previously. Now this next step is called stippling. It's somewhat similar to dry brushing in that I'm going to take my short dry brush and put a little bit of paint on the end and then wipe off the majority of it there on my napkin, but I'm going to leave a lot more paint on it than I used in the previous step because I want this to be much more pronounced and easily visible to the naked eye. Again, use your fingernail if you're not sure, and once you feel like you've got the right amount of paint on there, then you can start going to town on this guy. And remember, the point isn't to turn the entire miniature blue here. We're just going for the galaxy pattern that the Ghost Bear Alpha Galaxy uses. So go ahead and pick which spots you want to be blue, and then start working on those. Stippling is where you take the brush and push it up and down over the miniature in the desired spots, and use the occasional back and forth motion to get the paint in the spots that you want to have it. Now, I started with the much darker Kalidor Sky in the previous step, because when I stipple over this bright Lothurn Blue over top of it, it will make it much easier to see with the naked eye, especially when playing with it on the tabletop. Now, this is simply second verse, same as the first, so go ahead and stipple over the Lothurn Blue over the areas in which you did Kalidor Sky previously, but remember not to go too heavy here, because you still want to see just a little bit of that Kalidor Sky under those areas. So use your fingernail and make sure that you have the right amount of paint that you think is good before you start going, and stipple on that Lothurn Blue so that you get a nice bright look there. So now I've got out my lead belcher and small detail brush, and I'm going to start painting over all the areas I want to be metallic. I will say, however, that this step does require more steadiness than the previous steps, so if you don't feel like you have the steadiness you need, I recommend you just skip this part. Go ahead and repeat steps 1 through 3 on the entire miniature instead of leaving any blank spots and just call it good. Go ahead and skip on to step 7 if you like. But if you're continuing on with the metallics, I recommend picking out the spots you want to be metallic before even starting the miniature, so you have a basic idea of where you're going with it. For me, it's usually the arm joints, the knee joints, some of the grating like you can see here on the back. Just keep in mind that this isn't an ultra-precise maneuver. Just try your best to cover the areas you want with lead belcher, and in the next step, we're going to break out the null oil again, and that's going to help you if you got a tiny bit of paint in an area you didn't want it. Also, I don't want you to worry too hard about thinning your paint down here. Just remember, a little goes a long way. In the next step, when you put the Nuln Oil over top of it, nobody will even know that you didn't do it, so go ahead and just give yourself a break on it this time. So now I've got my Nuln Oil back out, and we're going to use it to go over all of those areas that I just painted in Lead Belcher. It's really going to bring out the detail in a lot of these areas, and it'll add a sleek gunmetal look to those barrels and connecting joints. Remember, this step is the same as in step 2, so if you get too much in one spot, use your brush to wick it away and put it elsewhere. You only want enough to seep into the crevices of the areas you're applying it to, and too much in one particular spot will end up eroding detail instead of accentuating it, and this is something you want to avoid. And now we're getting close to the end here. This is where you're going to get out your small detail brush and your Corax white paint so we can finish off the galaxy effect by painting stars all over the miniature. Now for this effect, you can feel free to add the dots of white wherever it is that you like on the miniature. There's really no rhyme or reason to it here, other than you don't want to overdo it and put too many of them on there. So each time that you go back to the pot for some more paint, just give it a glance and ask yourself if where you're at is enough before you move on. If you're satisfied with the amount that you have there, go ahead and move on to the next step and don't risk overdoing it. Now to give your stars a more nuanced look, dab them on in varying sizes from small to large. And I don't want you to worry about thinning the paint again here. Just remember that a little bit is going to go a long way for you at this stage. 
All right, looks good, so let's go ahead and move on to the cockpit. For these last two steps, you're going to need a steady hand. So again, if that's not something you have, what I want for you to remember is that painting is supposed to be fun and not stressful. So it's absolutely okay to leave the cockpit class the way it is and enjoy the miniature in the state that it's in after you've completed the other steps. But if you want to continue on, you'll need a pinhead size dab of Vallejo Lemon Yellow and that's it. Dab it out on whatever it is that you use for that purpose, and use your size zero brush to carefully add on two layers for opacity's sake. If you get a small amount on the edges of the cockpit, I don't want you to worry about it, because in the next step, we're gonna hide that and smooth out the yellow for a glowing effect. And for this step, you're gonna get your Eendin yellow contrast out and use the same small detail brush that you used previously. All you'll need is a very tiny drop on the tip of the brush, and you're going to let physics do all the work for you here, because this is liquid. It's going to flow into the cracks for you, and you won't have to do really any work. So just take this little tiny dab and dab it into the areas of the cockpit glass, and let the liquid flow around. And you're done! Give it a full spray down with your tester's dull coat, and I would say allow about 45 minutes to an hour for it to dry. Once it's dry, apply a small amount of your Citadel Ard Coat to the cockpit. It's going to give it that sheen of real looking glass. And that's it! Thanks so much for watching everybody! Tune in next time where we'll have a cracked ice basing tutorial for you. I'm Tuck Davian, and we'll see you out on the space lanes.